What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to Dark Horse Sports Cards, ladies and gentlemen. We are back from the National Dallas. The boys are in the back. You know, it's a real rip when we got the corgis acting up. So today's gonna be a fun one. We're gonna do a little breakdown of how our national experience went. We did a live show. Yeah. Terrible internet. It was bad. Uh, it was bad. Spoiler alert, terrible internet at the National, which caused a lot of problems for people like us that are very new. Trying and to we, comp things. We don't know what a 2020 optic rated rookie number to 75 Justin Herbert auto goes. We have no idea. We need our phones. <laughs> um, so we're going to go over the National. Uh, but before we get into it, guys, we are doing a giveaway right now. Uh, Contenders Hobby. Giving this bad boy away. Last so, week on Monday, we posted that video. So you can go back to that video and comment down below. Yeah, comment, like, and be a subscriber. And uh, we'll pick one of you guys to win this bad boy. And also on tonight's Whatnot Show, the Dark Horse Repacks are coming back. Uh, if you're not familiar to Whatnot, Whatnot is another place that we do breaks on. It's a great community over there. We got a bunch of people that jump into all of our shows. Uh, Silver Sage actually just broke baseball last night which was awesome you can use our link down in the description below and you can get fifteen dollars to use whenever you want with whoever you want yeah it doesn't, have to, be with us. doesn't yeah, have to be with us yeah on the whatnot uh app as well uh so it's very cool we will be breaking tonight live at 7 p.m eastern and also tomorrow at 7 p.m p.m eastern and the first giveaway is going to be a dark horse repack so giveaway you you don't have to buy into the break. No. It's a giveaway. Yep. So make sure you jump in. Uh, we always try to do a big giveaway at the beginning of all of our shows. So make sure you bookmark all of our sh upcoming shows as well. Um, but yeah, check us out and whatnot. And for today's video, this is going to be something we're going to be breaking today, uh, tonight on whatnot. First off the line, got to give a shout out to my guy, Run Good Life RGL, uh, one of the bigger breakers on, uh, on YouTube here. He reached out and was like, hey, I got some product. Do you want any of it? And I was like, yes. Please. Uh, we love, we Zenith. love Zenith. You guys love Zenith. And we love First Off the Line. Well, so, do we? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to be looking for for First Off the Line. Because I haven't opened First Off the Line Zenith yet. Well, I haven't either. But I've seen it. And you said we love it. Uh -huh. We love Zenith. We love Zenith. And First Off the Line is just like a jacked up Zenith. Can't wait. Um, do you want to give the people a little rundown yeah. of our uh, national experience, day one yeah. to day two? So um, we get in, I get in day one. Brody's there a day before. Um, I get in day one. Traffic is absolutely crazy. So yes. um, I tell him that. And so we kind of have a little bit of an idea of what we're getting ourselves into. So I had to eat breakfast before we went there. So we had some breakfast at this little joint down the street. And um, we kind of sneakily got around the traffic. People yes. were waiting in this traffic line for like 30 minutes to an hour. If you're coming on the east side, yeah. like northeast. From the airport. Northeast side, it was a nightmare. Yes. If you're coming from the south or the west, you could kind of sneak in to where the traffic mm -hmm. was basically not that bad at all. Yeah. So we snuck in. We got in. Um, and it was kind of funny because people were just kind of coming in and out of the doors um, freely. And we were like, okay, not bad. We purchased our tickets online, so we didn't have to wait into the we didn't have to wait in the line to get like physical tickets. Um, but we got in, and it was just pure chaos to us. We had no idea the layout. We did watch a few YouTube videos to figure out like where things were, mm -hmm. what the vibe was. But when you're in there, it's a totally different ball game. There is yeah. so much. There's so much going on. There's so much for sale. There's so many booths. There's a huge room right when you walk in. And then there's an extra huge room right when you, um, to your left, right when you walk in. So it was separated. Um, we went through the big room first. We were just kind of walking around the first day, figuring the layout. I had my Zion <laughs> case with all of our cards in my backpack. Mm -hmm. And never once opened it. No. Nope. Never once brought it out. No. Nope. To show anyone. No. We kind of just. We were purely just speculating everything yeah. the and first day. Initially, in my head, I was thinking I'm going to go up there. I, we've been talking about this over on Whatnot, but I'm going to go up there. I'm going to buy all these sick cards for our repacks. It's going to be awesome. Everyone's getting, get Burrow, get Herbert, get to, like, everyone's telling me who to get. And I'm like, I'm going to go in there. 
Didn't buy a single thing yeah. the first day. Yeah. Didn't sell a single thing the first day. And I told you, I was like, I don't think I'm built for this. Yeah. He was like, I don't think I'm built for repacks. This is a little overwhelming. And honestly, it really was. Especially it was since extremely. our first one. Yeah. Um, anyway, we did leave the first day and we had some lunch at Chipotle. Yes. And I Shout out Chipotle. wrangled some guy in the Chipotle. You can't call him. You can't call him. He was getting a drink from the soda machine, minding his and own business. And I was business. like, I was like, hey, 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 you want to buy some baseball cards? And that's how I started it off. And luckily he was actually like, no. Did not want to buy baseball cards. No, I'm not interested in baseball cards, but do you have football cards? We're like, do we? Yes, we do. So we kind of did a deal. I say kind of. First deal. We did our first deal in a Chipotle. Yeah. Um, It was really cool. It was really cool to like watch it go down. And then the second day we woke up and we had a game plan. Much better. We had a game plan. We knew what we were doing. And then um, we kind of weaseled our way. Well, we didn't know. We didn't uh, know. Apparently, we went to a VIP area, which we just had normal tickets. It was thirty dollars a day for each one of us, so sixty dollars <laughs> total. We um, we weaseled our way. We had no idea. We didn't like do it like maliciously. Well, we had no idea. We kind of just like walked in with confidence. Yep. And but that was our vibe. Downstairs, downstairs in the basement was, the was our vibe. A bunch of people were setting out and. This is what I learned, guys, from the National. There are different sectors in the sports card industry, okay? And I'm not going to use the word hobby because that doesn't actually encompass everyone. Uh, Hobby is a very small sector, I would say, of the sports card. I think a lot of people use that word to make it sound like they're not in it for the money or they're all about the vibes and all that. When eh, The bottom line, most of the people that use that word a lot they're probably in it for the money more than anyone else. So these are the different sectors that I saw. You have the true card collector, the person that is looking to get that last card in his rainbow uh, set, his rainbow, what do they call it? The rainbow, I guess, right? That last card, he wants that one of one. He's looking to trade cards of his for cards that he really wants, or he's looking to buy cards that he really wants. That is a very small, I would say, or sector, she. or she, very small sector of the people that we interacted or saw at the National, but they do exist. Then you have the other pers- the other type, which is the flipper. This is the person that is willing to buy a card off of you for $500 and then turn around and the first person they see, try to sell for $550 and immediately make $50. And that's all they're doing. They're buying cards and then immediately trying to sell them. Which the, is which is which is cool in itself too because well, it's like an adrenaline. Well, rush, no, right? the, there's no there's nothing wrong with any of these no, people. It's just no. different sectors. So you have that person, then you have the breakers and the repackers, which I was kind of in that group a little bit, where they're just going around and they're trying to buy cards that they can put in their repacks, right? And then you have the dealers who are basically either, hey, these are all the cards I don't want in my collection anymore, or are the are the guys that are like. I'm done with this. I don't want to do sport. I don't want to do sports cards anymore. They're trying to get rid of whatever mm-hmm. it may be. You got those people as well. I'm trying to think if there's another sector. Uh, obviously, you have all the companies, Panini, uh, Blowout let me, let Cars. Me, let me say one thing: the kids at the national downstairs, yeah. little hustlers. Yes, they are little fireballs. Yes. Firebirds down there making deals, wheeling and dealing. As this little kid came up to me. Didn't talk to him, but I guess he overheard a conversation downstairs. Asked someone asking me who my PC was. I told him Dak, and um, I had this little tap on my my hip, tap tap tap. Like maybe ten minutes after that conversation, he comes up to me. He goes, "Your PC is Dak," and I was like, "Yes, little six year old child." He's like, "Oh, uh, well, I don't have a Dak, but I do have a Brock Purdy. Are you interested?" And I'm like, "You're six. How much?" <laughs> and he goes. $600 and I was like no I'm good and then a guy comes up and was like you got that purdy how much because I guess he didn't hear how much it was and he was like $600 he was like 600 bucks hmm what's the lowest you'll take for it he goes mm, 575 and I'm like you're six yeah. you're willing to do like big bucks right now yeah. but I mean they do it we did that it kind of made me go back to the days of me and my brother doing Pokemon, but we didn't do money. We just did cards. You only ever did cards. Mm-hmm. Money was never 
money was never involved. Um, but it was really cool. It was yeah. a really cool experience. Um, now that we've gone, now that I had the interaction of selling some cards, we got to meet up with a lot of people too. Like We The Hobby, Connor and Nick are two guys that I watch a lot. Got to meet them. Uh, did a deal with King of Cards, which I like his Instagram content a lot. He makes some YouTube videos as well. Did a deal with him, Sky B. Sky B was like the first guy that I started watching to basically decide what products me and Kelsey were going to open on the channel. So I'd watch his videos on what retail product that he liked, and then I would go out and try to find those. So I got to do a deal with Sky B. Um, got to do a deal with a lot of people. So that was really cool. And a lot of you guys too came up and said like, hey, you'd like to watch our videos. So we appreciate that. Uh, I think next year is going to be awesome. Um, I think Silver Sage is definitely going to be there. He'll probably be our negotiator because I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm not a huge fan of the negotiation process. Yeah. I, you know, I'll look up a comp and I'll see the cards $100. And if someone's like, how much is that card? I'll say, I can give it to you for 80. I'm not going to say it's 100 and then we do the whole back and forth. To me, and this is where it's like certain people like certain parts. Yeah. Me and you really fit, found out after going there, we like ripping packs. Yeah. That is like our top tier thing. Mm -hmm. There are some people like Silver Sage, he's mm -hmm. going to love the negotiations. Yeah. He's going to love the back and forth. Yeah. To me, I didn't really like that that much. Um, so it's Just to each their own. To each their own. Yeah. Everyone, you know. So that's why the, the only thing I'm going to say hand up is the repacks, guys. It might be a one and done situation because I love ripping packs. I love going out and trying to find stuff to rip. I don't, don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to go out and try to find a bunch of cards for repacks. So maybe Silver Sage. Maybe that's where some some that he likes to do, and we'll do it that way. But uh, that was our experience. If yeah. you guys have ever gone to the national, let us know your experience down below. The lines, I will say, were extremely long. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple things that they didn't really have figured out. The second day, they tried to figure it out with the line situation. Last thing I'm going to say, Panini going into the national was like way down here way down here leaving the national they're a lot higher in my eyes they were very nice talking to a lot of people and getting some intel guys i think a lot of our stuff is directed toward panini and i think it should be directed other ways i'm going to continue i'm not going to say anything i'm going to continue to get some intel continue to get some research before i say anything but i think sometimes we're pointing the finger at the wrong person our only interaction with panini was awesome they gave us a black box with um uh, we got this Halliburton here. We haven't even shown this on camera. We got this Halliburton one of one auto on card second year for two redemptions. We had two UFC redemptions that were probably worth roughly, I would say, anywhere from $200 to $300 total. Mm -hmm. And they gave us a black box, t super fair, like obviously above and beyond what they should have given us. And then the guy that gave it to us said that it was going to be a football black box, mm -hmm. when in fact they don't know if it's football or basketball. And so when we opened it and it wasn't football, we went to them the next day and we're like, hey, you guys said it was football. And they're like, oh, well, we shouldn't tell you what it is because we don't know if it's football or basketball. They gave us a free sparkle pack, mm -hmm. which those things are going for like $50 to $150 in that range. Yeah. So they made it right. To be fair, like I thought our interaction with Panini was great. Uh, and speaking of which, we'll see how that goes because we're about to open a Panini product, FOTL. First off the line, exclusive sparkle patch auto number to 50. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Exclusive sparkle patch auto number to 50. We're also looking for one FOTL exclusive pinnacle inscription auto. So that's an auto where it's they indented. might. That's an auto where they might write something else. An inscription oh. is go Ravens, go Bucks, oh. go Raiders. Um, we're also looking for one base card, one rookie card, and two inserts per box. So this should be a little bit more juice. Looking at the price of this, this is about $350, $360 box. So these boxes are a little pricey compared to just the normal ones, mm -hmm. but they're first off the line and you can pull an absolute monster out of here. So let's see, not that lot of cards. No, just six cards. Six cards. So we're looking for two autos, same thing, two autos. And one And, and one, one patch. patch auto. Yeah. And that's on average. So everything well, else on the back. Well, two autos, one of those will be a patch auto. Yeah. Correct. Everything on the back is still the same. Yeah, everything's still in play. We just might get one of those extra little juicy boys in here, and that's what we want. A little FOTL action. 
We right. want the one that's numbered to 50. Yes, we do. Yeah. All right. First one is. Oh, I mean, of course. Of course. Shout out to everyone, too, that came up to us and talked to about the bucker. You got to use the don't peek behind because yeah. it's going to be an auto right there. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, it might be another giveaway there for you guys. Let's see what Kelsey does. First one. It is a shimmy shine. Is it a nice one? Let's uh, let's let's show a little bit of respect to Panini and the cards. We'll talk, we'll give this. A look. Of course. We'll give this. A look. Of course. All right. Here we go. First. Can we start off with a giveaway? Wow. Front rim. All right. Hey. Good effort. Front rim. Not too shabby. We'll take it. All right. Do you want to save that? You want to silver sage that one, or you want to? No, let's just go. We're not silver sage. We're not silver sage. Silver it sage. It is that. Oh. Oh boy. Oh, oh, that's a big boy. Oh, come on. Bijan. Zay. Ty J. Oh, Ty J. Spears. Ty out of Spears. Hey, look at that patch. Yeah. Look at that patch. And this that, is the sparkle to fifty. Yes, that is why. That's the sparkle exclusive FOTL. That is why you rip FOTL, folks. Wow. This is why you rip hobby. Absolute monster. Derek. I like the, I like the star he does. Derek Henry's gone. Okay, Derrick wow. Henry's gone. He's yep. going to be the guy. Yep. This is an absolute hold, and that is an absolute wow. beautiful patch. Unbelievable. Wow. Very nice. Heck yeah. All right. That's why you rip FOTL. And like I said, guys, we are going to be ripping this all night over on Whatnot. So make sure you guys check Ooh. it out. Ooh. That sounds like a Stroud Ooh. No, definitely not. Oh, you got an inscription. Yeah. Save it. Save it. Save it. Wait, what? We got a... Uh, wow. So it's supposed to be a Sparkle Patch Auto, an exclusive Pinnacle Inscription Auto, or less. Oh, wait, you get one of each. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so, okay. So it's normal. These, these are juiced. So this... Yeah, these boxes are just juiced. This is, this is a normal FOTL juice box. Sam Howe? I don't know. Brian Robinson Jr.? It's Sam Howe on the Z... Gino. Oh, Gino on the C, st C team. All right, a little Gino there. Not numbered or anything. No. That's just a normal insert. Yeah. It's a little thicker than... Oh, it's actually... It's completely normal. Yeah. All right. What do we got here? A Viking. Jordan Addison on the shimmy shine. Justin Jefferson. That is clean. And that actually looks really good. Absolutely love those cards. That looks really good. Some people good. call them like refrigerator magnets because of like how how shiny they are. But yeah. that is very nice. We will take that. The boys seem to be liking it too in the back. Commanders. Rookie. Not really who you're looking for. All right. Jartavius Martin. That should be numbered. No. Oh, not numbered. No. Just a rookie card. Interesting. All, All right. right. Here's the inscription. Here is the inscription. This could come from literally anyone, too. This could come from literally I'm not going to lie. I saw the team already. What was the team? Cardinals. Kyler Murray. Kurt Warner. Zach Ertz. Wow, on card. Zach Ertz on card. Number to 100. That's a nice looking card. I mean, tight end. He is a solid tight end. Um, probably wanted Kyler there if we could. Dang, I like these boxes. I'm not sure why it's called inscriptions then. Because I thought there would be some Pinnacle sort of inscription. inscriptions. Yeah, I guess it's just on card. So, if this toots your fancy... And you like these. We're going to be breaking these all night on whatnot tonight, folks. Just to have a background. To Very that. cool. Heck yeah. Not too bad. The sparkle, pretty nice with Tajay. And uh, there you have it. A little FOTL action. I think this might be our first ever FOTL rip. I, I don't, I don't think, think we've ever, ever ripped it. FOTL. Yeah. yeah. I tried to get it for Optic. Didn't get it fast enough. L the price that it dropped to, yeah. it dropped to like 1050 bucks. And that was the price where I was like, let me just Sold buy out. one or two here and then see if it drops again. I'll try to get a case. Sold out. Sold out of my cart. Yeah. When I was in my cart, sold out before well, I could get it. So we're ripping these all night tonight on whatnot. Ripping these all night. Is. And remember, guys, the Dark Horse Pack is it's going to be the first, giveaway. The first giveaway. First giveaway of many. So hope to see you guys there tonight. Thank you so much for listening to. For those that just jumped ahead and watched the rip, hey, we appreciate you as well. But uh, that was our little national recap, little national experience. It was fun. 
I think we'll be back. Um, I don't know how many days we'll go next year. Probably three. Because I think we also three talked about two next year, guys. I might just post up. I might just post up and say, you want me to buy your cards? Bring them to me. I'll buy them all. That was luckily the Gino. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys tonight and whatnot. Keep ripping them packs.